Hey everybody, this is a guide on beating Underworld in Guild Wars 1 with only 7 heroes. Before we start off with the guide, I'd like to give a shout out to Eric, Peter, and Broth for having a wealth of information that I used to make this guide. Seriously, this wouldn't be possible without them. I used their guides to try to figure out for my first run everything I needed to do and prepare for this guide, so I really recommend checking them out. They're great players and great runners. Another small thing to know is I recommend using this guide for melee professions or just for the strats in general. Uh, I will leave a link to Eric's guide on doing it with a caster profession, and I would follow what he does uh, for the small changes in between, but I am running a melee profession for this build. Another thing to note is that you don't need any concepts for these builds. Um, I do use concepts in my run for this explanation. It made making the guide a lot easier, and I do recommend it for your first run, but these builds and strategies should work without concepts. So without further ado, let's get into the build section of this guide. So for the builds, you are going to be running two Raj, um, which is Ray of Judgment Monks. Uh, your normal E Surges, you have a normal uh, Protection Ritualist, and then your normal Signet, well at least in my case, the Signet Spirits Ritualist. Um, that build would differ a little bit if you're a caster. Um, you might notice that this is just, I believe this is just a seven hero Rajway build is what you can look up to find it. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, that's actually all this is using. These builds were taken from um, Eric's and Peter's, I'm using Peter's Dervish build just to show that they do work. Um, there's not much to say about them. Like I said, it's a very, it's a little bit of a slightly modified uh, seven hero Rajway build. But um, if you follow what I'm doing in, like with what I have stats wise and uh, have my skill set to, you can surely beat the Underworld with it. I've done it twice now. Um, the only thing I'd recommend is those two Quickening Zephyr, the Ranger Spirits. You, if you don't decide that you want to use them, um, you can sub them out for some other things. I don't make a lot of use out of them. I only really used them in Doom. But um, you can sub those out for other things. Uh, another important thing is some of my characters don't really have a good staff, but that's because they, they hold um, their little lantern for the buff. Um so they, they don't need it as much. Most of my characters, if as long as you have a staff of like cooldown, your uh, skill recharge, you're good. Like a 20, 20, whatever. Uh, nothing else really to say about that. Uh, we're about to start the Underworld right now. There's not a whole lot to say about Clear the Chamber, which is the first quest in Underworld. It basically just spawns a bunch of Grasping Darknesses around the initial area, and you'll clear your way to the first Reaper. Once you reach the terror webs, beating them will spawn the first reaper. I would also recommend clearing the surrounding area so that you don't have him die later on when you're not there. Once you talk to him, I would grab his quest restoring Grinth's monuments and start heading to your first objective. You can start doing any of the quests at this point in the underworld, but I would recommend you start with the four horsemen first as I do in the video. This is usually because this is the hardest quest. Beating the four horsemen first ensures that you don't fail on it later, not wasting your time. Another thing to note is as you're clearing out the underworld, especially for your first time, I would try to clear as much trash mobs as you can as it'll help later for other quests. And if you're not trying to do a speed clear, you shouldn't have any reason not to.
Once you reach the Reaper of the Chaos Plains, I would suggest that you kill the Terror Web Driders last, as this ensures that he doesn't die randomly or you overpull. It can be a little sketchy, but you are able to beat everything without doing that. I would just suggest that you try to kill the Terror Webs last to spawn him later. All right, so preparing for the Four Horsemen. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cast Bloodsong and Pain a little bit away from one another. The main reason for this is it distracts the other uh, Dooms that come by. And also these two minions are the ones that last the longest. And it gives you time to go prepare and then run back and start the quest. So you wanna flag your heroes about here and then you wanna cast Soul Twisting, Bloodsong, and Pain. You're then gonna to run to the next preparation spot. You're gonna flag your heroes the same way I have them. And then you're going to basically cast your other spirits on the way as you go grab the quests. Once you start the quest, four horsemen will spawn two on each side with a bit of terror webs and some delayed skeleton of dooms. Uh, the main threats here are the terror webs. The four horsemen themselves actually aren't that big of a deal. And there is a pretty good strategy for this. So basically you're gonna clear the right side where we have all of our heroes flagged. And then you actually don't need to run up there. You can run up there and get a few hits in if you feel comfortable or maybe feel uncomfortable that your heroes aren't going to kill them fast enough, especially without concepts. But it really isn't that big of a deal. Um, you can stay at the Reaper, technically, if you wanted to. Uh, I would suggest to play that one by ear. Um, I didn't do it in this one because I have concepts on, but if you don't, maybe you want to get an extra few hits of damage in. But basically what you're doing is you're waiting till they kill the four horsemen on that side then you're going to teleport to the original reaper and then you're going to teleport back immediately you're going to also remember to unflag your heroes and then by that point shadow song uh i mean blood <laughs> blood song and pain will have been killed and the rest of them will be stacked up and ready for you to kill them there is a lot of things that can go wrong in this quest uh namely not enough damage uh, lag can affect you, heroes can sometimes just not want to hit what you're trying to target. There's a few things that can go wrong. Uh, with concepts it's pretty easy, but this is definitely possible without concepts. I've done it with these builds without concepts in my first run. Uh, obviously not in this run, but it is easily possible without them. One thing you're going to see that's common among a lot of quests is that they have delayed spawns. In this particular instance, they have a lot of delayed like uh, Skeletons of Dooms. So you can see that I wait here uh, just for them to come by. You don't want them to accidentally kill the Reaper. Uh, there's a lot of quests that have that. I'll show you them when they have them. So just be, uh, be aware that sometimes you might not actually be done with the quest even though you're done with the quest. <laughs> Once again, there is no real order that you have to do these in, but what I'd recommend you do is you go to the Flesh Pits next and do that Reaper because you're right there. It's also, in my opinion, kind of the second hardest quest. Uh, I guess that's the one's debatable maybe, but I don't like this quest very much. <laughs> 
this is also one of those areas that I really, really, really recommend that you take your time and you clear everything out in. Uh, this area is very cramped. It has some hard spawns in its quest, and you don't want extra stuff in there with you. That would, that would be very bad. <laughs> the same goes for most of these areas. You can see that I'm still not super comfortable uh, with skipping mobs. There's a lot of spots where you can skip mobs and save time in your run. Um, but for your first few runs, maybe just take it slow like I did. Uh, it definitely made me feel more comfortable having a lot of things cleared. Um, it's just all around. If you're going to take the time to do it, you know, make sure you have the highest chance of success. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do with Imprisoned Spirits to prepare is you're going to set flag your SOS writ over in the corner. You're then going to have your Soul Twisting writ. Uh, you can summon her two protection spirits around the middle here. And then you want to flag Pain and that little like nook just as another like time waster for the enemies on that side. And then you're going to flag the rest of your heroes in a straight line uh, after you've summoned all of your stuff. And then on your way to the Reaper, while they're flagged there, you're going to want to resummon all of your spirits again, just so that side is also defended. You can't wait a little bit extra though, because it doesn't really matter until uh, you're about to grab the quest if they're summoned or not. So the main thing about this quest is that you'll have alternating sides of spawns, kind of like you'll see in a couple quests. Uh, the problem with this one is you have these four spirits that you need to protect. And with concepts, this, this quest looks really easy. Without concepts, this quest can be a little scary. Um, so the general strategy is going to be the same. Uh, with and without concepts, you're going to kill the side that they're flagged on. You're going to have them run over to the ones that we delayed on, and you're going to turn around and then kill the last spawns. But without concepts, what I'd recommend is even if you don't fully kill their side that they're flagged on, maybe let them loose and come kill the Doom skeletons behind the spirits because they're closer uh, after they killed a couple of the terror webs and then rush back. You're going to see what I do here, but it it's the same thing. Just be a little more aware of your surroundings is all. Last but not least, there is another delayed spawn here. You're going to want to wait here, kill these, and then you are safe to leave the area while the spirits walk back to the Reaper and finish the quest for you.
Okay, so the next of these quests is the Terror Web Queen. In all honesty, it's a pretty easy quest. I might skip through a little bit of it here because there was a moment where she wasn't working with me. Uh, you're honestly just going to clear out the, uh, the enemies in front of her spawn as easily as you can. Uh, don't over pull, but it's not too unsafe if you've already cleared most of the stuff. Uh, you can also bring a longbow. This would be the only extra weapon I would suggest bringing is if you have a longbow she didn't work for me in this run but you can just shoot her and pull her out of there uh, where she has her four little obsidian guys you can see that I just kind of went for it because she just was not being kind to me um, this this quest all in all though is a pretty easy quest there's not much to worry about here The next reaper we're heading to is the Twin Serpent Mountains Reaper. Uh, he has a pretty easy quest. It's called Demon Assassin. I'll explain it more when we get there. What I suggest for it while you're running there is, I guess you can clear out the Obsidian Behemoths, um, but this is one of those areas where you are very, very able to just skip uh, a bunch of mobs. Uh, you'll want to uh, kill the Charged Blacknesses, and you'll also... I prefer to clear out the obsidian behemoths uh, around the guardian. Um, you will need to flag your heroes if you want to run past them, so um, otherwise your heroes will get stuck on trying to fight them. But it's not too bad. There's not a whole lot to say. I cleared out most of the stuff just because I was clearing it, but you can skip a lot of mobs here. Alright, once you pick up Demon Assassin, you'll want to already have had your heroes flagged at the bottom of the mountain. You'll see what I mean here in the video. Um, the reason for this is because what happens is there's a mob called the Slayer who will spawn. He will rush up the mountain to try to kill the Reaper. Honestly, he dies really easily, but the thing you need to look out for is um, afterwards, a bunch of Terror Whip Driders come in as a delayed spawn, and they walk very slowly up the mountain so you don't want to miss those those are honestly the hardest part of this quest um, I would just kind of watch what I do in this video uh, it's pretty simple though you just you kind of want to just take them as they come so like there's two separate groups I would try to just pull the first one a little bit uh, before it gets to you so that way maybe you can have a head start on killing that group and then the second one will get to you kind of spread out your heroes do the normal thing you do when you fight dryers uh, and you shouldn't have any problems with it.
The next thing I recommend before we do any other quests is go back to the labyrinth and now clear your way to the Forgotten Veil vale Reaper. Uh, the reason for this is this makes the next couple of quests a whole lot easier and uh, you'll you'll see why in a moment when I explain it but um, clearing those extra mobs will make it where you're not overwhelmed and you can take your time with the next couple of quests and uh, you'll, you'll see why but yeah definitely clear your way to the Forgotten Veil. Vale. Here's another little tip. You can kill the first like three roaming paths of cold fire knights here. It'll actually help you out just a little bit. Um, later on you'll have a quest where you'll need to walk up this hill on the left and so they won't be there to bother you if you kill them now. Uh, you don't have to do it, it's just a little kind of like convenience thing. Alright, so the next quest I did in this run is the Escort of Souls quest. Um, basically what happens with this quest is there is a uh, there's a group of souls that spawns uh, near the Reaper and they'll begin slowly walking their way towards the Forgotten Veil. Vale. Um, specifically the mare right outside of where the uh, Reaper is. Um, a few amount of enemies spawn. It's not a super hard quest, especially if you've already cleared all the surrounding enemies, which is why I suggested that you clear them all. Uh, one thing you could do differently here than I did in the video is uh, you can flag your heroes by the first set of stairs over there, and um, that just saves you time from having to run over there and flag them all with you uh, in the first place. Um, it just saves a little bit extra time, especially if you're not using cons to get that first group of uh, mobs killed before the spirits walk up to them. They're pretty slow though. Once you beat that first group, if you've cleared all the other mobs, you should have no issues getting to the uh, the rest of them. You can go ahead and just clear them all out. They'll slowly follow suit and this quest is a breeze. Alright, to begin Wrathful Spirits, I recommend you start by flagging your heroes in the same way that I am in the video. Um, this is a little bit of a harder one to explain only because there's a lot going on and you just kind of need to keep up with uh, what mobs are killing what. Um, I recommend flagging here in the beginning, um, the closest to the Reaper. Uh, kill the initial wave around here, you can then head to the back. Uh, past the mare near the bridge kill that set um and then just kind of kind of crowd control um kill them where you know there there is a lot of them um it's a lot of back and forth uh slowly and surely you'll kill all of the spirits and then you don't need to worry about the ones behind the reaper there is a set behind the reaper you don't need to worry about those at all um you can clear everything in the town first and you want to make sure of that because if the, all the spirits die, especially the mayor, make sure he's protected. Um, if they die, then the quest is over, you fail. Um, but otherwise, it's it's fairly simple and it's not too bad. Just make sure that you keep up with um, killing everything. It's a little harder without cons. Uh, I have done it without cons. Um, it's just... It's just a lot of crowd control, really. That's all this quest is. Um, like I said, a lot of back and forth. Pay attention to where uh, where mobs are spawning and kill them accordingly. And once you finish uh, the town, go ahead and just run um, back behind the Reaper up the hill. And you can just clear that last set and that'll be the quest done.
All right, the next quest is Unwanted Guests, uh, back at the Labyrinth. Before you start this quest, you're going to want to flag your heroes um, just in the hallway. Uh, so the reason for this is because it's an easy way to kill the uh, little tiny terror web. So that's the whole point of this quest. There's a thing called a Keeper of Souls that spawns with a bunch of packs of mobs around it. Uh, and most specifically, the Addixes, which are unkillable. They take no damage. The only way to kill them is to kill the Keeper of Souls, which kills the rest of the mobs around it. So you'll want to flag in that hallway. Uh, they'll kill the initial wave. That'll clear that small uh, spot. And then you'll want to run back to the Reaper. You can teleport to the Forgotten Veil and run uh, backwards. This gives you access to the Keeper of Souls in this hallway section that you'll see in the video. Um, from there, you can kind of follow where I walk in the guide. The only one I do not recommend that you do what I did is um, there, there's one at the very end of this, the last one I believe I pulled in the video. Uh, don't run at it the same way I did. So there is a alternate path going around to enter the uh, Twin Serpent area. You'll see what I mean in the video. Um, I made a very sketchy pull and I ran straight through the Attixes and straight through a bunch of other mobs to kill the last uh, Skeleton of Doom. Or not Skeleton of Doom, the Keeper Souls. And then that is what I don't recommend. It's a lot easier to go around the other way. Um, otherwise, this is a pretty easy one. Uh, you'll see a lot of times I'm actually just waiting. And I'm, the reason I'm waiting, I'm waiting for Attixes to move out of the way so that I have easy access to get in, get out, kill the Keeper of Souls. Um, it's not a super hard quest. You just got to be a little patient with the uh, the mobs uh, roaming. And um, like I said, the very last one, you can do it the way I did it. Don't do it the way I did it. I recommend that you just go around. Uh, there's a door section um, like in the very beginning of the video where you uh, pull the first Grasping Darknesses and Attixes and all that. You can actually just keep going straight. That'll pull you uh, around to the entrance and you'll, you'll be able to just walk to where the keeper souls is a lot easier than doing what i did you can see it in a, i believe eric's video um but yeah do not do not do that pull <laughs> that i did go ahead and just go around make it easier for yourself but th this is a pretty simple quest you just got to be patient with it This Keeper of Souls in particular is the one I'm talking about. If you see behind me, that's where we went originally to go to the uh, Twin Serpents Mountain to go to all the Chaos Plains and stuff. Um, to the right back there, that's just a little hallway that um, connects to that initial beginning section of the uh, entire underworld. So I would recommend that you go that direction instead. You can be a little more patient and you can have almost free access to go behind here and just kill uh, this little terror web guy and also if you want go ahead and clear out that section for you to walk around to begin with so clear some of the addicts out so that before you start the quest you should have no issues going behind there and killing this guy with ease also to note that this is the final section of the run this is the ice waste um, I like to do this one last just because it has a pretty easy quest, and also um, it leads straight to the ending of the Underworld, where we get to fight Doom. So to get there first, what I recommend, I mean, go ahead, just clear your way to the uh, mob. You can skip a lot of the initial um, section of the Ice Wastes. 
I like to clear it out just because, I mean, I'm there. I'm going to clear it out. <laughs> but um, you can skip uh, that entire first portion uh, where you walk up a hill and then there's like a cliff and you walk down the cliff. That section, I recommend clearing everything. But um, that's just me personally. You, there's a lot of mobs you can skip. I'm not teaching you how to speed run this. I'm teaching you how to do the basic strats. So I would just say go ahead for the basics. Clear out the uh, ice wastes. It's pretty easy. Maybe you drop some ecto off the smite crawlers. Um, and then when we're here at the quest, I will go ahead and start explaining the final quest before Doom. Okay, so before we end up actually grabbing the quest, I'm going to recommend that you set up your heroes in this specific way. You can see where I'm flagging. I flag number one there, number two over there, our entire party here. And as I'm flagging the entire party, I'm actually pull, uh, summoning a couple of my spirits and then pulling them back. Just take note as to how I'm summoning my spirits. Um, it's not too important. Um, but it is pretty useful to uh, space out your spirits for this as they won't all die together because uh, there is a few terror webs and uh, skeletons and stuff that spawn in this. Um, so just to clear out AoEs, make sure your guys don't die. Go ahead and just flag them this way. Summon your spirits. Get them a little uh, mixed and less crowded um, and you should have no problems. So this quest in particular, uh, when you start it, it's pretty slow. Um, a lot of the mobs will die. Uh, there is a point where I break off my flags. And it's after you kill... Um, there's like two or three waves of it spawning like left and right on these terror webs. And then um, at that point, it spawns a bigger group. And that's the point that I break my heroes just to start bum rushing and killing everything. Uh, though that's pretty much the end of the quest right there. It's, it's really not a hard quest. Um, I have also done this one without cons. It is uh, very easy. Um, I just would be a little cautious. It's nothing too much to worry about, really. Um, just clear the mobs. Do your best. Shouldn't have any issues with it. Once you beat the Servants of Grinth's quest, that opens up the Nightman Cometh, the final quest in the Underworld. This quest is the one to go kill Doom. So if you brought cons or if you didn't, um, you probably killed these mobs a little quicker than uh, you probably expected to. So if you run up to the right, you should be able to see King Frozoen. He's the giant snowman. Uh, you can grab the quest from him and you can start heading to Grinth's chamber <laughs> all right so preparing initially for doom uh, there's a few things that I would recommend one you can see me actually spacing out my heroes uh, I put my first three heroes to the left side of my screen and I keep the other ones on the right side but I do space them out so I can see their buffs this is because you get death penalty during this fight um, I very much recommend that you can see exactly who has what on them as far as buffs, specifically death penalty. Um, I'll explain more in the fight when we get there, but that's one of the things I recommend. Another thing is bring a set of cons. You'll only need one set of cons for it. Uh, if you're your very first run especially, bring a set of cons. It will make it a lot easier for you. Um, if you don't do it, good luck. If you do do it, it'll make it a lot easier for you. Um, the final thing that I recommend you can bring is death penalty removal. I'll ex again, I'll explain why later, but you basically get to skip an entire mechanic if you bring enough of them. I don't have an exact number for you on how much to bring, uh, but bringing those will definitely make the fight a lot easier for you. All right, so we are now about to fight Doom. The first thing you'll see me do is I'm going to flag all my heroes here. And then I'm going to specifically flag the first three heroes up to Doom. And the reason for this is they are going to be our death penalty removal. 
Uh, they're going to turn into spirits when they die, and uh, we will use them as death penalty. If you don't, if you bring death penalty removal, then you don't actually have to do this. You can set up how I do. Um, you want to cast your protective spirits out here. You can also cast your ranger spirits if you brought them. Um, so you get the first three heroes flagged up there. Uh, summon some of your shelter and uh, dissonance, I believe, outside. And then when you walk in, you want to flag your heroes at the door. Um, and the reason for this is you don't want them to go run up to Doom. He's going to aggro onto the first three and kill them immediately. And uh, you'll want to keep them dead. If you brought cons, um, use them after the first three heroes are dead. It'll make them die easier. Unless you've already been using them, then just uh, make sure that you keep them up there. Make sure that they die and turn into spirits. And then you're good to flag everybody back at the door. Also something I should have mentioned right away, um, have your spirits lock, or uh, have your heroes uh, lock their skills the same way I have them. And the reason for this is when they turn into spirits, they won't have certain skills available to them. And this will make a little more sense later, but basically you're going to be using Doom's Rest to fill his Doom's Rest bar in the top. Um, they won't be able to use any other of the other attacks, which will lock out Doom's Rest. And um, later on in the fight, when you finish his bar, you can go ahead and undo that and then go ahead and lock Doom's Rest and just let them do damage. But for now, go ahead and have all of your skills locked exactly how mine was before I pulled Doom. Okay, so there's a couple key points that I want to talk about Doom. It's the... There, he has a few skills, and he does a lot of damage, um, especially without cons. He is very rough. Um, he's not hard, though, if you don't panic with him. So you'll see that I'm doing a lot of different things here, and you do have to keep up with a lot of things for this fight. Um, the main things are... Uh, to break this up into stages, any time that Doom is not right on you, um, so let's say when he starts ducking down into the ground, um, make sure that you're flagging your heroes to the door so everyone stays in that corner. Uh, also make sure every time he starts going into the ground to recast all of your spirits. Recast your shelter, recast your Cygnus spirits, whatever. Recast all of them. Um, other things to do during those periods where he goes into the ground, uh, you'll want to be casting Doom's Rest constantly. Cast it as many times as you can. Um, and the last thing I can think of is you'll want to make sure that you're using your spirits to remove your death penalty. Uh, this is arguably the most important thing you can do. And another thing you can do to optimize it is um, you can keep going. Even once you remove the death penalty, it, it'll put it uh, into positive, um, p uh, positive bonus. Um, you'll, you'll want to prioritize death penalty Spirit summoning and Doom's Rest every single time he goes into the ground. No other time uh, should you really be worried about it if you're doing that. Um, so that's what I suggest. Every time he goes into the ground, go ahead and flag your heroes, summon all your spirits, make sure you're casting Doom's Rest, make sure you're clearing any death penalty that someone might have gotten, and then prepare for when he walks back. You can see another thing that I'm doing is I'm standing a little closer to the center of the room. Um, and there's a reason for this. One, I'm trying to block out Doom every time he walks towards me. Uh, if you kind of catch him in a corner, he can't go hit your uh, minions and uh, or your guys. And it will it'll help you ball him and do a ton of damage to him and keep all of your guys safe it'll also kind of help you be the only one that gets death penalty so it makes it a lot easier for you to keep track of um if there's a lot of times where he will just skip over you if that does happen it's all cool just make sure your guys are flagged in the corner if they get hit uh they will be set on um they're set as like midline heroes 
Um, so they start to scatter. It's kind of rough. You might can get away with not setting them as midline heroes and just setting them too aggressive. Um, I didn't do that in this video. and I didn't do that, I believe, in my first run. But it is something you can consider so that they don't scatter when they get hit by Doom. Um, but those are the main things about his attacking phase uh, when it comes to keeping track of things is just kind of try to ball him into a corner, get him stuck like you see me trying to do. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a good way to do damage to him during those times. The main thing you're actually doing though during those phases is less about Doom and more about clearing his minions. So he summons minions and a champion. Um, they do a lot of damage and if they are left unhandled, they will kill you. Uh, so every time he summons his minions, he does it every single way if there's nothing to worry about. Um, when he starts attacking you, he walks towards you, he will summon minions. Um, just go ahead and clear those first, then prioritize Doom. Minions first, Doom second. Always in that order. Um, other thing he has is Judgment of Doom. It is his worst skill. He does a crap load of damage, and it's the, honestly the main reason I recommend cons. Um, if I didn't bring cons, then I would recommend maybe setting up your in uh, your insignias a little different, taking off some of the superiors maybe, um, in favor of keeping a little bit more health. Um, but that's just kind of debatable. If you trust yourself a little more, maybe if you're playing Monk or something and you have extra heals. But um, I would play that one by ear. I liked having cons for Judgment of Doom. It is arguably a scariest skill. Um, it's the, also the reason that I recommend you play a fighter for this. Judgment of Doom is... Uh, it is a physical skill, so casting the armor... Um, up from save yourselves is a huge boon and it will basically make judgment of doom almost like a wussy skill <laughs> so anytime you see him uh, shoot like green waves that is judgment of doom go ahead and pop save yourselves uh, the main thing you want to prioritize in your uh, situation with attacking is um, when you're not worried about minions Always keep up save yourselves, ready for when he casts Judgment of Doom. There are some times where he won't do it in that phase, maybe you kill all his minions fast enough, um, or he just whiffs and you uh, you knock him down or you interrupt it. But uh, more likely than not, you are gonna get hit by Judgment of Doom every single time he comes out. And uh, to be best prepare yourself for that and all the damage that you're gonna take, go ahead and pop save yourselves. Um, so that's usually how it goes. From there, it's the same thing over and over and over and over again until you finally beat him. Later on in the fight, you'll see me uh, you'll see me unflag or unlock um, Doom's rest, uh, or I lock I lock Doom's rest on my heroes. And the reason for this is that the Doom rest bar is full. Uh, that is honestly the longest part of this entire run filling doom's rest it'll slowly run up um the gauge but casting doom's rest makes it a lot quicker that's why i said every time he goes down go ahead and cast it um any other times when the doom's rest bar is up it's a waste of a skill so you can go ahead and lock doom's rest once you fill the bar uh, unlock some of your other skills. They, they'll then give you access to uh, one skill in particular that does 250 damage each of your spirits, um, which is really good. So that means your guys will be spiking him for 750 damage. He'll start dying really quick when you do that. Um, I believe the other one I think is like a... Uh, it makes all of the minions like not hurt you or something. Uh, I'm not sure on that. The main one is that damage skill. Um, so yeah, when you when you fill Doom's Rest Bar, go ahead and lock uh, Doom's Rest on your spirits and unlock the attack. It'll make killing him so much quicker. Uh, so that's really all it is. Doom is a very repeating pattern. So once again, I'm going to go through it uh, as you're watching me fight Doom. If the initial attacking phase, uh, make sure you have your back to him. You try to uh, get him stuck in a corner. 
prioritize the minions over Doom, uh, keeping up save yourselves in case he casts Judgment of Doom. This will ensure that you don't die from Judgment of Doom because it does a lot of damage. Um, once you kill his minions, you can focus him. And then more, more than likely after that, he will go to the ground. When he goes to the ground, make sure you reflag all your heroes at the door without fail. Go ahead and cast your protective spirits. Start casting Doom's Rest. Um, and you'll want to also make sure that you have you'll want to make sure that you have your death penalties all zero or max out at ten positive. Um, that is the best case scenario. So go ahead, get your death penalties, get your spirit summons, cast Doom's Rest as much as you can during that phase, and then prepare for the next phase. He's a repeating pattern from there. He's a really easy fight once you know what you're doing it does take a good amount of concentration though you'll want to you'll want to be patient you'll want to be patient you want to be very um prepared for him and you'll want to be very focused on just making sure that you follow those proper steps and then he becomes a breeze uh there are times where he will cast judgment of doom as soon as he spawns and it will hit all the reapers uh as long as he's not constantly doing that, that's not a big deal. Uh, it's not something to worry about. There was times in my first run where he immediately leashed onto one of the Reapers, and at that moment I freaked out. <laughs> I would unflag your heroes in the case of that. Go run over to Doom, try to lure him back to the door as soon as you can. Make sure you're killing the, um, the minions that he spawns, because you don't want them to kill the spirits. Uh, it's okay if a spirit actually dies during this mission, as long as all of the spirits don't die. Um, other than that, like I said, repeating pattern, go through the motions. If you're backing up close enough to him, he should always aggro you. I don't. Th he didn't unleash at all during this fight in this video, but um, it is something that he can do. So that's why you might have saw me in the video at some points. I'm backing up pretty far to try to make sure that he targets me when he first initially spawns out of the ground um yeah there's not a whole lot left to explain about him he is a very easy boss uh, and in all honesty he's not that hard once you figure him out it's very nerve-wracking the first time though um another thing i suggest prepare to have a lot of time especially if it's your first doom fight my first doom fight took me 30 minutes <laughs> and that's because i was uh super nervous about it i didn't know what to expect I was going in not blind because I watched a lot of videos on it, but I was still not sure exactly on a couple things. Uh, specifically, the Doom's Rest thing was not very clear to me. I did not unlock. Um, I did not unlock the damage skill once I filled the Doom's Rest bar, so that made it take forever. And. Uh, if you're doing this like your second or third time around, you're probably going to see this fight take more around 15 minutes. So prepare your time. Make sure you have enough time to beat Doom. Um, just take your time. Have fun with it. He's a very fun boss. And once you beat this, you've finally beaten the Underworld. Um, the guide is over from here. There's not much else to say. So I'm just going to let the fight continue. And uh, if you have any suggestions for uh, other guides you'd like to see, or if you have any other things that you would like help with, Feel free to ask. I might be able to help you. Uh, or go ahead and check out uh, some of the guys that I linked in the description. They have quite a number of videos on a bunch of other stuff that is really amazing to me. I made this guide because I wanted a very basic guide for myself. Uh, whereas I had to piece together this from guides and run speed runs that they have. Um, I feel like I did a good job on explaining it. Uh, I hope that I didn't miss too much. Um, like I said, feel free to ask if you have any questions, and I'll try to answer them in the comments. Uh, good luck, guys. Have fun with Doom.